shall cause thy mistake to reach all the planets of the earth. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to a brand new episode of Roundup. It's just me again, but we'll have Ghani back in no time, so not to worry. But let's get right into it, because we have a lot to get through. Here's what's coming up in today's show. The International Court of Justice rules on the Gaza genocide case. Then we take a behind-the-scenes look at the voice of Islam. And last, why is Ginger mentioned in the Holy Quran? Let's take a look. As always though, we start with a look at the top stories. Assalamu alaikum Arshman, what do you have for us today? Assalamu alaikum, here's what's happening around the world this week. Colombia declared a natural disaster emergency and asked for international help this week as wildfires raged across the country. The country has put out some 204 fires this month and 31 fires continue to burn. Smoke is billowing from wooded, mountainous areas east of the capital, Bogota. The fires come amidst soaring temperatures and dry conditions. Britain is returning a selection of Ghanaian gold looted from an Asante king in the 19th century. The 32 artefacts from the British Museum and the Victoria and Albert Museum in London are a part of a historic loan deal between the two countries. The artefacts will be loaned to the Manhia Palace Museum in Kumasi, 150 years after they were stolen. Britain is in the middle of a global debate over a return of priceless objects stolen during colonial times. Most notable amongst the contested items are the 2,500-year-old sculptures removed from the Parthenon in Greece. The Australian Open comes to an end this week as the finals are held across all categories. In the women's final, China's Zheng Kenwen reached her first Grand Slam final to face defending champion Arena Sabalanka. In the men's final on Sunday, Yannick Sinner faced Daniel Medvedev. Sinner earlier stunned defending champion Novak Djokovic to reach his first Grand Slam final. The Australian Open kicks off the Grand Slam season with the French Open next up this spring. That's all from me this week, but back to you Nasir for this week's episode. Jazakallah Arshman for that look at the top stories from this week. Now it's time for us to head over to Osman and Arsal for our weekly Friday sermon summary. Let's take a look at some of the key points taken from this week's sermon. Assalamu alaikum dear brothers and sisters, welcome back to this week's Friday Sermon Discussion. During this week's sermon, beloved Hazur, may Allah be his helper, reminded us of the profound teachings that echo through the ages. Let's dive into some of these remarkable lessons. One of the most powerful lessons highlighted in this week's sermon is the unwavering compassion of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Despite his injuries, his deep concern for his people and his prayer for their forgiveness truly showed the Prophet Wasallam's level of empathy and forgiveness. It's truly remarkable, and let's not forget the extraordinary bravery of the companion. As we were mentioned, Hazrat Anas bin Nazir Anhu's selflessness, enduring countless wounds for the sake of his faith, serves as a timeless example of courage and dedication. The unity of the companions and resilience during the battle, coupled with the unwavering support of women like Hazrat Fatima Anha, highlight the strength of community and the important role of women in Islamic history. And let's not overlook the divine intervention mentioned in the narrations delivered by Hazur. The angels descending to aid in the battle remind us that, even in the most challenging moments, the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his companions, were supported by Allah. When we zoom out and look at the great lessons from the Battle of Uhud, we see a picture of resilience, faith and compassion that goes beyond time. It's a reminder that these values are universal and enduring. Whether we're facing personal challenges or navigating difficult times in our communities, the spirit of Uhud teaches us to stand firm in our beliefs, to face challenges with courage and to extend compassion and forgiveness even to our opponents. During this week's sermon, Beloved Hazur also reminded us to remember the Ahmadis of Yemen in our prayers, as they face incredibly challenging circumstances. We should all pray for unity, wisdom and understanding in the Muslim world, and for the world as a whole. 
as we navigate the troubling times ahead. Before we conclude, dear brothers and sisters, remember to tune in and to listen to the complete sermon from our beloved Hazur, may Allah be his helper. It holds blessings and lessons for us to ponder and apply in our daily lives. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah Osman and Arsal for giving us the most salient points from this week's sermon. Now let's go to Kasha for this week's special report as the International Court of Justice makes its ruling on South Africa's case against Israel. Kasha, what can you tell us? Assalamu alaikum. That's right, Nasser. The International Court of Justice has ordered Israel to take all measures to prevent genocide and improve the humanitarian situation in Gaza. Specifically, the court said that Israel and its army must immediately prevent the killing of Palestinians and causing mental and physical harm to civilians. Israel must also ensure humanitarian aid and basic services are provided to Gazans and report back to the court on all measures taken in one month's time. The ruling comes in a case filed by South Africa accusing Israel of committing genocide. While the case itself has yet to be heard and a ruling on genocide will take years, South Africa has asked for emergency provisional measures to be put into place to stop the continuing bloodshed. It was those provisional measures that the ICJ ruled on this week after a hearing on the 12th of January. Palestine welcomes the momentous order by the International Court of Justice. This order means that the court recognized the gravity of the situation and was convinced by South Africa's compelling presentation that was based on law and fact that there are plausible cause to believe that Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. It means that the cries and suffering of our people in Gaza have been heard in the great hall of justice. The ICJ also ruled that it, that it is plausible that Israel has committed acts of genocide, violating the Genocide Convention, setting up the case to be heard in the future. While the ICJ's ruling is binding on all member countries, it relies on the UN Security Council for the enforcement. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had previously said Israel has no intention of complying with any decision against it and reiterated it the same after Friday's decision. Jazakallah Kashif for that update. Let's pray we move towards a peaceful solution in the conflict. Now, I'm sure by now most of you have seen the behind the scenes of the studio here and how we produce this show. Well, today we're going to take you behind the scenes of another kind of channel based not so far from here. Take a look. Assalamu alaikum and welcome. We're here today at the Voice of Islam Studios. As many of you know, it's a 24 hour broadcasting station. But have you ever wondered what goes into the making of your favorite shows? Let's find out more. Assalamu alaikum. I have a few questions for you. But first, can we take a quick look oh, around? Yeah. Come with me. Uh, so this is our studio, uh, Voice of Islam. This was inaugurated by Hazuri and Waridullah Talab Ibn Saziz back in 2016. Uh, he came, inaugurated uh, the studio, and that was the official launch of the Voice of Islam. Now, if you come around this way, what happens is Voice of Islam has two live shows every day, uh, Monday to Friday, one in the morning from 7 to 9, and then one from 4 to 6 in the afternoon, the drive time show and the breakfast show, as well as on the weekends we have a live show. But when the presenters come, they come here, they have these mics so they can hear how the sound is, how their voice sounds like, and then you have these buttons where you go on air. So this is one of the studios that we have created for pre-recorded shows or if there's a live show happening at the same time you want to do a separate recording. Members of the tech team, they work here. This is Akib. Assalamualaikum Akib. So after every show, every live show, we upload our shows onto SoundCloud so that people can listen back to it. Um, and also different other platforms and if there's anything that needs to be edited, any you know unnecessary noises or anything, that's where the tech team comes in. Jazakallah for showing us around. 
Now I had a few more questions for you. Can you walk us through the process of how you're putting a show together before it goes on air? Of course. So what we do is we get everything approved by the members of the board that approves the topics. And then the team, which consists majority of them uh, of Lajna, um, they start working on that. So you have one uh, member who works on the script, what needs to be said, some of the talking points, some of the information, relevant information that is needed for the presenter. And then there's another member of the team who works on guests. So we have you know, so many guests or throughout the years that we've had on The Voice of Islam. So these are you know, from professors to doctors to CEOs to you know, experts in their field. Then everything comes together. You also have a meeting with the presenters where the presenters give some guidelines. Okay, this is something that we should maybe pursue. This is something that maybe we should leave out. And then you have the show itself. And uh, Alhamdulillah, it, it, it works out so far. So this map has caught my eye, but what is it? So this is basically a map of the UK. The little yellow dots that you see, that's where Voice of Islam can be listened to on DAB. Uh, we are online, so from anywhere around the world, if you download the app or go to the website voiceofsound.co.uk, you can listen to it. But then um, in the car, if you want to listen, or on the radio, if you have a radio at home, then we are on DAB. We started off with just London in the very beginning, but Alhamdulillah, as is the case with everything within the Jamaat of the Promised Messiah, we're expanding. And now it's a total of nine cities. So what are some of the challenges of hosting a live show? Excellent question. Sometimes when we call a guest and you know that the next 10, 15 minutes, the slot will be filled with that guest, something can happen, right? So the phone might not connect or the lines might be not clear. They might be in a place where the reception or the signal is not that great. So you can barely hear them. So it's always good to have some extra information on the side technology side of things that the guest doesn't pick up or you know there's a miscommunication or anything like that that sometimes does happen while the studios here might not be very large in size they enable the true voice of islam to be heard all around the world jazakallah for tuning in and until next time assalamu alaikum jazakallah osman for such an informative report i really enjoyed looking at the behind the scenes of voice of islam and i hope you all at home enjoyed it as much as i did Finally, today, we continue our series on foods in the Holy Quran. It's not one you may think of right away, but you probably have it in most of your meals. Let's have a look. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to our series where we talk about foods mentioned in the Holy Quran. Today, we're going to be talking about a superfood known as ginger. Ginger is mentioned in the Holy Quran in chapter 76, verses 18 to 19. Ginger root is a staple in Chinese, Indian, Caribbean, African, and other cuisines. Ginger root can also be crushed or dried to create a powder. This powder is often used for baking, such as gingerbread men. Ginger has many health benefits. Ginger oil, a natural component of the ginger root, encourages efficient digestion so food doesn't linger as long in the gut. Ginger also has many anti-inflammatory qualities and may even help reduce blood pressure. Did you know it's possible to grow ginger at home? I'm really interested to find out. Come with me! There are two kind of ginger which I use. This one is Indian ginger. It is very strong in taste. That one is Chinese which is good usually we use this for our curries and everything now first of all you have to choose the ginger which has got eyes we call it eyes over here is growing coming out that one this one i have put already in this soil bone meal and uh, fish and bone and blood uh, chicken manure which is manure is very very essential for the vegetables and the other thing is oyster shells. These are they, these provides calcium, and other thing is that they hold water in it, moisture, which uh, which is very important for the uh, ginger. Now we have to cover it with another soil, again about two inches. In the beginning, 
not to water it from the, the top. Always have a tray underneath, put the water in here, and then slowly the water will go and it will feed the uh, ginger. And in about, I think, two to three weeks, the sprouts will come up. And then let it grow when it is about six inches high. Then you can, if the weather is good, I, I usually plant outside in March. Auntie Jamila, when do we get to harvest the ginger? Uh, it takes about nine, eight to nine months or ten months, you can say. It depends how the weather is and it should be always in the sun but in the shadow. That's it for this week. Stay tuned for another episode of Roundup. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Jazakallah for that report. We've learned so much in today's episode. But that's all we have time for in today's episode. But make sure to tune in again next week for more from around the world. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram for exclusive behind the scenes content and send us your feedback to roundup at mta.tv. Jazakallah for joining us in today's episode. And until next time, Assalamu Alaikum. Yeah.